from the from the you know I seek refuge from the evil of all creation or everything that's been created. He said, "Ma khalaqa," what he Subhanahu wa Taala created. Why is that important? Because whatever harm the creation can cause you, know that the one who created it has more power. He can save you from that harm because he's the one in the end who created it. So his reference, him getting credit for the, being the creator, gives him power over whatever harm the creation may be able to cause. The second is shar is not attributed to Allah. Shar is attributed to khalq. And ulama talk about this in depth and it becomes a philosophical issue, but I'll give you the gist of it. People keep it really simple. The bottom line in Islamic studies when it comes to the concept of shar is that evil is not actually an entity in and of itself. It is only considered the lack of good. Just like darkness, you know the imagery of tawheed and shirk, darkness and light, darkness actually doesn't exist. What actually exists? Light. When you don't have light, what do you have? Darkness. So darkness in and of itself isn't an actual entity. It's, it's goodness that's the entity and a lack of goodness is what's, what darkness is. So evil in the end is what? A lack of good. But this ayah has profound lessons in it because Allah left the, the language open and universal. Min sharri ma khalaq, He didn't reduce it to shayateen. The evil in the next surah is sharri al-waswas al a very specific creation. But when you say ma khalaq, whatever He created, from the harm of whatever He created, we learn from this that there is no creation on the face of this earth. No creation on the face of the, that doesn't come without a flaw. The only one free of flaw is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything else will have something missing. Something will be missing. Some element of shar is possible from everything. Think of the most amazing creations of Allah like the sun. So many benefits from the sun. Are there harms on the sun too? So many benefits from water. Is there harm in water also? So many benefits in the earth. Are there harms in the earth too? So many benefits of the sky. Are there harms that come from the sky also? Everything Allah has created has an element. It can have harm in it. It can have harm in it. So we ask Allah Azza wa to protect us from the potential harmful elements of everything. Things that are, not, that are beyond our perception. You know, a car, very beneficial, can it be harmful? Can you die in an accident? Can you, get in, you know, can you put yourself in great difficulty? Yeah, it's possible. So all creations have that element of harm, potential harm in them. And so we ask Allah Azza wa His protection from all of them. مِن شَرِّ مَا خَلَقُ for first of all, Allah is sending. Min, he didn't say min al ghasiqi ida waqa. Min sharri ghasiqin from the evil of the dark. In other words, Allah is letting us know that there are harms that are inherently present in the dark. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would advise the Sahaba not to go out at night. In some narrations, he'd say, "If you knew what I knew, you wouldn't go out at night." The shayateen meet in the oceans at night. They come out at night. And you know, in our society, when is it time to act like the devil? Right? It's Friday night, Saturday night. And you, if you don't believe that there are harms that come, up, come at night, watch the documentaries that have been done about the ERs across America. You know when they are filled? Friday and Saturday night. They're filled. Car accidents, people killing each other after a couple of beers, drugs, alcohol, you name it. You name it. All of it, all that evil occurs when? At night. At night, subhanAllah. There's something evil, the, pot the potential of evil is far superior in the night. And of course, this is why it's more dangerous to travel at night. You wouldn't go out late at night. You wouldn't even let your kids go take out the garbage in the middle at 2 a.m. You say, no, do it in the morning. It's in, it's in human nature. You don't want to go out at night. And so we ask Allah, something that's inherent in human nature, we ask Allah, protect us from that dark evil. إِذَا waqaba. Now waqab, what's the, what's the word waqab? Because you know, in, in Lugha, waqab is also a reference to darkness. So it's kind of like saying from the evil of the dark night when it gets dark. But it's already dark. So what's this getting dark over again? And why a different word for it? The word waqab, like waqab al dhalam So dark that things become invisible. Waqab is actually used when something enters into, you know, there's a, there's a ditch inside a mountain at night and something goes into that ditch. And you can't see it anymore. That's actually called waqaba. In other words, we're saying there are things hiding in the dark that we cannot see. This includes the shayateen. And I told you, a'udhu, isti'adha, i'adha in Arabic, a'ud is you, or, or iyad is used for seeking protection from things you cannot see. So now after min sharri ghasiq, by the way, I want a side comment about the guys, just the guys. We hang out at night a lot. We go out late a lot. We, we, up until 2, 3 in the morning a lot. You gotta quit it. You can't be reciting this 
and then hanging out late at night. It doesn't work. Because you're on the one hand, you're saying, yeah, man, it's a lot of time. And you go, you know, in the back of the restaurant at 2 a.m. and you're reciting, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقُ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقُ مِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَوْ When the full moon is out. <laughs> it's a little, little contradictory. So yeah, I know it hurts. It, it's close. I hang out at night sometimes too. But we have to curb that behavior. We have to get rid of it. Because there's, it's, it's really not something acceptable. Plus, there are other harms of hanging out late at night. You know the kinds of people you'll see at restaurants at night. You know the kinds of people that are out at night. Plus, how, how wonderful your fajr is going to be. Even, if, even if, if you do wake up, how awesome is it going to be? When you're standing there like tipping over even if you're not drunk. Right? So, we ha- there, there are harms in the night and we ask Allah's refuge for them. Allah has taught us to protect ourselves from those things. So we should take precaution ourselves. I know it hits close to home, but we should take these things into consideration. After all, this is guidance for ourselves. The final comment inshallah ta'ala, the final two comments rather. Uh, I'll, I'll mention the positive comment to you first. So jealousy is a really terrible thing except وَمِن ذَلِكَ مَا صَحَّ مِن قَوْلِهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وسلم, From the things that are acceptable as what is authentically narrated from the Prophet ﷺ, لا حسد إلا فثنتين. There is no room for jealousy at all except in two things. رجل أتاه الله تعالى مالا وسلطه على هلكته في الحق. A man who Allah has given wealth and he is exhausting himself in destroying it, spending it for the truth. He just wants to get rid of it all. And the words are really interesting. Fi halakatihi to destroy that. I just I don't want to look at it. I want to give it all up. It's like he can't hold on to it. He wants to give it up for the sake of Allah. This attitude of giving. When somebody has that, you say, man, not just I'm not just jealous of his wealth. You know what I what you're jealous of there? His attitude. How does he have? I'm, how do you get that? How do you want to give money up so so easily? Like it's hard for him to hold on to it. It's easy for him to give. What's the case with most of us? It's hard for us to give it. It's very easy to hold on. You know? Especially when it comes to fil haq in the truth, spending in the path of the truth. It's very difficult. You know, uh, fundraising can be like pulling teeth. For you to like uh, uh, give a hundred dollars towards the building of a masjid or you know, helping out the madrasa or whatever else, right? This da'wah program or this or that. It's very difficult. But when you go to Walmart, you don't think twice. Yeah, swipe the card, it doesn't hurt. You don't think, man, this money could have been better used for, you know, the, co- the kid's college fund or this. No accounting comes to your head. But when it comes to spending in the path of Allah, all of a sudden, all of you become CPAs. Man, this money could have been, I need it over there, and this bill and that bill. And the whole financial balance just rolls before your eyes. It's like you've logged into your online account just sitting there in front of the masjid. All the funders is going on, right? And you think all of the reasons why you should not be giving. But this person, we should be jealous of. Who when the opportunity comes to give, he just, let me get rid of it. It's like it's on fire when it's with him. And he just wants to get rid of it. This is the first person we should be jealous of. Now, you know, some people don't understand this. And what do they do? Man, I wish I was wealthy like him. If I was, I would spend too. No, you wouldn't. (laughs) Just like the money part. You'd spend, but not like he spends. Right? So sometimes we have these, you know, I really want to be rich so I can spend in the path of Allah. Yeah. You really mean that? <laughs> you know? Or do you mean I really want to be rich and yeah, I'll spend a little, I guess. Because I feel bad. I said that already. <laughs> right? SubhanAllah. We can't play games with our intentions. And so this person, it's, it's someone to be jealous of. Some, something to aspire. 